I'm Steve. This is part two of the compound miter serving tray build. Again, this is a prototype build is a, a, to use offcuts and salvage material from, from shipping crates to build gifts and other useful items. Uh, this part will cover the glue up and the finishing. Compound miters are not, are not at all easy to, easy to clamp. I'm going to use uh, Collins clamps, and this is soft wood, so that has some, uh, it's going to leave some holes on the outside, and I'll show you how I deal with that here in a little bit. But I've got my piece, I've dry assembled it, and, and everything should be good to go. So let's, uh, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is just put glue in all the slots, biscuit slots, and then I'll worry about the outsides later. And then what I'm going to do now is just put a little glue around both sides. Now this, because this is end grain, normally I would only put glue on one side, but end grain needs just a little more. Don't put a lot on because in the case of glue or adhesives, a little goes a long way. Plus when I put the biscuits in, I'm going to have a bit of squeeze out from that. You know, I'm just going to put the biscuits in the short end, trying to put it close to the center mark, and you'll notice it squeezes out at each end. Notice I have an extra biscuit just in case I have problems getting with one. So now what I'm going to do is take this little brush, kind of spread it over the end grain, equalize any, any squeeze out. I don't worry about too much. Actually, I worry about too much glue more than not enough. But even if I don't fully cover this over the whole piece, any squeeze out, what I found is that glue does spread in the joints. So. Need to make sure my top side is up. I'm just going to start assembling. Just loosely at first. Now I'm going to take the Collins clamps, which are basically spring clamps. That they have these special pliers that they use to separate them. And I'm just going to start pinching them across the joint, pull this thing together. And it does a really nice job of pulling these joints together. I try to keep them as horizontal as I can, but in that case I didn't.
in a way, this is the moment of truth because if you don't have your uh, angles set exactly correct, that's when you will start seeing gaps. So now this thing is clamped up. And uh, right now, I'm just not going to worry about the joints, but what I will do is kind of wipe some of the excess glue off the bottom. setting this down in a puddle of glue. Make sure my points are all right. This is a bench crafted scraper and all I'm going to do is just take that corner. This is carbide. I'm going to go down and knock off any, any glue squeeze out on the inside corners. So the inside corners are all cleaned off. Not going to worry about the outside right now. The next step is I'm, I'm going to take these Collins clamp off, show you what these Collins clamps do and how I'm going to address that. See, these Collins clamps are very, have very sharp points and they do dig into this pine quite effectively. And as you can see, there's these, let me get close enough here, I don't know how well that's going to show. You see that there's a fairly deep point there. So I'm on this side. I'm not sure how the glare is. See one there, one here. And you'll see that all the way around. And I'm not going to worry about the glue squeeze out on the outside yet. What I'm going to do is start expanding the fibers on this, uh, on these where these collin clamps have have separated them. And I'm going to take a pipette and this one's used for um, oh, CA glue. I'm not sure who. I think this is sat a Satellite City Brown uh, brand I got from my wood local woodworking dealer. Local by I mean 85 miles away but that's the closest one. I'm going to take this pipette and just squirt some water in these holes. And this is going to take several applications. And it'll raise the grain around the uh, around these locations. Right now these are just you know, probably slightly more than a than a uh, I want to say is probably a 20 21 gauge, 20, 20 gauge pin. And by squirting the water in here, I'm hoping to expand these wood fibers to close that hole up. And I'm going to help it along here uh, later with, with uh, applying the, an iron to hopefully swell that up just a little more. Okay, so I've uh, got a spray bottle here with just some water, uh, just a piece of shop towel. What I'm going to do is apply this over here, and it's this operation is quite similar to to trying to to use moisture and heat to pull a dent uh, out of a out of a piece of wood. I think I don't want to get too rambunctious here from the uh, because I do not want to affect the glue joint. Now this does raise the grain quite a bit so that's why one of the reasons why I have not done the final sanding on this and I'm just going to go apply this in addition to the water I dripped off on every corner Okay, so 
Now I'm to the point of I've given the wood time to dry. The grain's been raised primarily on the corners. I do have just a little glue squeeze out. I'm not overly concerned about that. I'm going to use a power sander. This has a medium pad on it. One of the things I'd, I want to avoid is to not round the corners off. Uh, so you don't want to use a soft pad there. This is one area where if you let things get out of control, you'll start exposing end grain from one of your miters. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, take this. I'm, I'm starting with 180 grit. Okay, so now that I've, I've gotten this with 180 grit, I'm just going to repeat this with 220. Before I attach the handles, I'm going to take a block plane and, and this sharp corner here, I'm just going to um, take a, a block plane, just a very slight chamfer to it. Make sure you try to follow the grain to not get any tear out. Just to knock that, knock that sharp edge off and the reason you want to do that is not only it, it's, it feels better, but your finish will, t will, will not have a sharp edge to that where it just wants to peel away or break away. The other thing I want to do is these, these sharp corners here. I'm not taking a plane to that. If you do have any openings, what I'm going to do is take my burnishing tool, which is a hardened steel, for, it's for card scrapers, and I'm going to take it over the edges and just make that not so sharp. Now if you have any very minor gaps there, which this one didn't, but it will roll the wood over and act to close those things up. Here I've just got a very, very slight, it's probably, oh, maybe, maybe a one, 128th of an inch gap right there in the middle. And that takes the sharp corner off, plus it rolls, it, uh, it closes the gap. Okay, now I'm ready to glue the handles on. I've got my dominoes. By this time, you should have, uh, if you're going to do this, and I've already done it, is to test fit this to make sure all the dominoes are in alignment. First thing I'm going to do is insert glue into these slots. Do not do too much. And I'm going to take the fat tip and I'm going to spread the glue around in the, uh, in the slots. The reason I do not put glue on the um, on the sides, as you can see, it's, it's going to get there anyway, particularly when I drive these uh, um, dominoes in place or push them in place. Hopefully I can push them in place. But if not, I'll just use the tabletop and squeeze them down. Now what I'll do is use my brush here and I don't want too much on here. I just I want to keep it close to the center and let it squeeze out on its own. Orientation is important. Make sure your bottom side is, bo is toward the bottom and your top side is toward the top. And it's nice to have the clamps handle handy to pull this thing together. And as you notice, 
There's plenty of glue squeeze out. <laughs> Even with that small amount of glue. And the dominoes hold it fairly tightly anyway, so that shouldn't be a problem. But I had plenty of squeeze, squeeze out on both the top and the bottom. I'm going to let that skim over and then use this carbide scraper to scrape off the excess. Now on the corners, these are very sharp, so to, for a good finish, I'll just take this and just touch them up. It, first of all, it removes the sharpness off, and uh, it just doesn't take much at all. Don't be, go very lightly here, otherwise it, it, it has a tendency to, to really round them over, and it just doesn't quite look right. So, let's see, bottom's here fine. And now I'm going to take a tack cloth to it, and then I'm going to I'm going to spray this with a with a polyurethane satin polyurethane finish. I'm just I'm not going to stain anything. I just kind of like the contrast here. I did not mention this earlier, but before I assembled the tray, I applied one coat of the, the satin polyurethane to both the, the top and the bottom of the, uh, of the uh, bottom of the tray. And I just, I got into the habit of doing that because as this top, and, or the, the bottom expands and contracts with changing humidity conditions, it just makes sure that I've got finish all over the, the bottom. What I'm finishing with is a Minwax uh, fast drying polyurethane. It's a clear satin. And I'm going to put my respirator on. And I'm probably not, maybe this is a blessing to you guys, but I won't be able to talk very well with this on. Okay, two more uh, coats of this, and this project will be finished. So I think this serving tray, this prototype build, turned out fairly nice. I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, well, you, you know what that other thing is. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.